Hello everyone, welcome to Positron Plays Mages of Mistralia. This is a Zelda-like game with kind of a unique twist to it. Uh, it's all about crafting your own spells. I played this first back at PAX, um, I think two years ago now. And then I most recently backed it on Kickstarter. So now we're going to play it on the channel. Uh, now this, what I'm playing on now is actually a pre-release pre build. But um, it should be pretty up to date. But in case there's any little oddities, this is... Um, just before release, so uh, I couldn't actually post any content before release time, so you'll be seeing this after release time. But this is on a pre release build, so if there's any little oddities, they've probably been repaired by now. So let's get started on our journey here. Some sort of disaster has befallen us. Hello, sir. So they know about your secret. And who is this fellow? He's our mentor. Nothing better to do than start you on your road to becoming a mage. If I don't, you'll no doubt burn down the entire valley. Hmm, so it must have been mixed up in something we didn't quite know how to control. I don't think you have much of a choice, lady. Probably didn't want to stop having a home and an uncle either. That's... that's pretty dark. But it happened. You can be imprisoned or killed for being a mage, or be a real mage. Do some good. Yeah, we still don't know who he is, but he keeps saying that he's our mentor. And we? We're Zia. Time to start growing up indeed. You'll become mage or you'll soon become dead. Yeah, I think that's a pretty easy choice. We have much to learn. So this guy's gonna kinda take us under his wing and help us out and figure out, you know, what, what caused our troubles to begin with. And apparently it gave us some pretty sweet new clothes. And here we are. So everything that takes place in kind of this top-down perspective. Occasionally you get like a side view or some zoomed in stuff too. Uh, we can wander around here. Can't really do anything with these right now, but that'll change pretty quickly. I, d I beg to differ. So, spellcraft. Majory, if you will. People care less about words and more about deeds. The valley would be a better place. That's a pretty good message. We would like to become a mage by trying and failing, learning, spells. Yeah, we still need to actually learn spells. Try to do magic without knowing without a spell book and cottages burn down, yes? Yeah, not good. Try and fail and learn. So, we're tasked with heading over to Haven where there are other mages hanging out. Hmm. 
And that's where we receive training. Follow the trail through the forest. And he'll meet us there, basically. <laughs> I don't know if we wanted to be a mage. I think we just kind of didn't have a choice. The valley is dangerous. You meet some horrible monsters, burn them up. You managed a whole cottage, didn't you? I am going to uh, quickly just turn the volume back up a little here. Head down a couple of notches. I was afraid it was going to be too loud to start. Yeah, so we're headed off. We're going to Haven. And uh, we have to go through the forest to get there. And when we get to Haven, we'll supposedly be taught some, some spells. Well, short trip. Oh, we're gonna have to find another path now. What do we have here? Hmm, spellbook of some sorts. And it talks to us. Entices us with telling us they can get us back where we're going. However, I have a bad feeling about, uh, yeah, the spellbook is communicating with me telepathically. I don't think Mentor's book does that. So we have what is presumably a spellbook even more powerful than the Mentor. And we're going to learn our first Imidi spell. Or Imidi, but yeah. So essentially, it allows for instantaneous spells such as slashes and explosions. So we get our basic kind of electric attack. So essentially, you can think of this kind of as a uh, like a sword swing. And these uh, green globes are currency. But well, we can swipe at this object here, and it opens the door. Now it does take magic, but not a lot. I can also hold the button down to continue uh, casting, essentially. Yeah, meaty spells are, like it says, they're used immediately, instantaneously. And it can be used to attack, of course. So you slash this guy down, no problem. Very simple. Hm. Which mage isn't guarding this part of the forest? So, it seems like the mages aren't doing their job, perhaps. Also, I'll say that I really like the color palette in this game. It's just like super bright and vibrant. All right, so now we're gonna learn an ego spell. It allows for spells affecting oneself, such as shields and fast movement. So the first one we get is the shield here. I'm actually going to drop down here because I want to grab um, this stuff. There's a bunch of currency down here. Yeah, so you can see there's this kind of jet of rocks and stuff coming out, but we can just hold our shield and block it. Now the shield will drain... I think it'll drain magic slowly over time. Yeah, um, and then faster as it takes damage. It also has a, a short, uh, small startup cost too. Um, so it does cost a little bit just to use it. And then it kind of drains based on how much damage it takes. We can go here, we can block this spear. 
like so, and go in for a slash. And I am playing this with a controller, it's actually recommended to uh, play with a controller here. So the next one, this is an Actus spell. Allows for spells with conditional duration, such as mines and projectiles. So the first one we get is this little flame. We can use it to light this torch. Essentially, this is like a little, almost like a mine. We can kind of drop it there, it'll linger around for a little bit. If something walks into it, they'll take damage. This is kind of like, this is our very, very first puzzle. We can see that we step off there, the flame stays there, and it'll come back and it'll light the torch. Pretty handy. And eventually we'll be able to start combining all sorts of things in regards to this. I actually think the uh, sound effects might still be a little too loud. Knock that down one. Right, one spell type left to learn, Creo spell. Essentially creation. Allows for spells with durable effects such as ice bridges and firewalls. So we can come over here and plop one of these down and create these little ice platforms that we can walk on. All right, so now we get a little more complicated combat here. But still not too bad, they're still just goblins. No problem. Yeah, so there's a teleporter here, but I don't know where it goes. Well, it appears it goes straight to Haven. How convenient. Yeah, well, there was a kind of an issue with falling off of a bridge. Yeah, he's a little surprised that we have a spell book. But we were supposed to get that here. Yeah, we've kind of skipped ahead a little bit. I feel like he's not as worried about that as he should be. Yeah, this creature here is the Enchanter. Takes care of the place. Yeah, normally he'd also provide the spell book, but we kind of already found one on our way here. Ready to go out into the world and become a proper mage. So we have to go to the Mistral Woods, and this evil has started to take root there. Yeah, we're about to get a really harsh life lesson that if we're going to have this power, we need to do something with it. Yeah, may just keep the valley safe from wayward magic. It's our job now, too. So he's telling us that this lamppost here, these are checkpoints, or save points, basically. <laughs> and don't step on his flowers. So we need to head south to reach the Mistral Woods. Good luck if you believe in such a thing. So we can inspect this. So this is actually, um, yeah. So we can plant some things here. Poor Enchanter. Maybe your garden should be a little off the beaten path. So he wants us to go get some new bulbs for his garden. Magic lily bulbs. If we have four, we can fill up the garden. So there's one in the woods, one in the rise, and one in the highlands. He doesn't know where the last one is.
Yeah, so we can use those green currencies known as soul beads to create mana charms from the magic lilies. Essentially, mana charms are mana potions. So it seems like... Yeah, so we'll get one here too. So it seems like I'm assuming that these replenish, and every time we come back here, uh, or maybe when we hit different save points and stuff, we kind of fill up on mana charms. I'm assuming it, uh, it's... What's the best way to explain it? It's kind of like an Estus Flask in Dark Souls. You know, or health potions or mana potions or, you know, anything like that. But it's it seems to be refillable from uh, what I've played so far. So we can wander around a little bit here. There's a treasure chest over here. We get some soul beads. Don't believe we can do anything up here yet. Hmm. Yearly gathering of mages. But the stone used to be in Mistralia Castle. Kind of like a like a mage round table, perhaps. Yeah, so there's something strange about why it's here. Now there's a little hidden passageway back here. We come down here, we see this thing from the title screen. <laughs> Safely observes the sky, but it's unpowered. Yeah, so it's nothing we can do with this yet, so... I'm guessing uh, we'll eventually be able to do something with that. Yep, this is Senna. Hey, welcome us to Haven. The Trial of the Mages, but we're not ready for it yet. So that's what this is over here. Um, but we can't go in there quite yet. We need some more abilities for that. Yeah. Chance to win amazing prizes. But it's closed. <laughs> yeah, so once we get some more abilities and stuff, that'll open. We can go in there and... Um, Take part in basically like a mage coliseum. So this place says Debrissid. Legendary hero and quite mad. I think that might be a Kickstarter statue. Because that was actually, when I was playing this the other day, that name wasn't on there yet. We can whack this little target dummy here. Get some extra soul beads. Now these, um, we don't have any purple soul beads yet, but these will basically give us um, heart containers or mana containers. Hello there. We are new. So this is Emma. Emma's just going to show us another type of puzzle we're going to encounter along the way. Yeah, so it's protected by this magic seal which kind of have this like Mage of Mistralia symbol on them. Um, and we can unseal them by solving the puzzle. So we simply have to line up these pieces here so they all connect. Now obviously that one's really simple, but um, the ones I've found already get fairly complex. So that lowers the water and creates a staircase so we can actually get out of here now. Yeah, so we can find some other seals in places of the valley. Mages used to seal their belongings back there, so maybe we can find some hidden stuff behind these seals. So this looks like... Um, you know, like you can highlight it, usually means you can interact with it, but we don't have the rune necessary to, to do anything with that quite yet. Hello there. Yeah, we're kind of kind of new around here. Just follow the road. Yeah, 
yeah, so we can always access the map like this, and this gives us kind of a general layout, not like a, a map of an area, but a general layout of, you know, where we can go. And these signposts are here too, and the purple signposts, or the, uh, the glowing signposts, will always point back to Haven, which is nice. So they were in Greyleaf Hamlet. Yeah, there was a fire a few weeks ago. Um, that was kind of our fault. We can't quite get to the rise, so we'll have to go through Mr. Woods, which is where we're headed as well. So to Mistral Woods we go. And it seems to be inhabited by goblins, though. So we won't have an easy path coming through here. Yeah, so they're gonna jump out at us. Let's, uh, let's just light this campfire here. And we'll get a few soul beads. And uh, I think that's well. I'll pause for now. So next time, kind of got the setup of the game, the general premise. Let me see if I can show off. Yeah, so you can see the different type of runes. Uh, and this is kind of the grid by which you can connect them. And runes will connect to each other via the uh, the different points. So not every rune will connect to every other rune um, and things like that. So it's it tends to be a pretty complex system once it gets going. Uh, but yeah, we can see our items here. Uh, we only have one type of wand right now. Um, and there's our map. But uh, yeah, so that'll do it for now. Gets us set up for the adventure. Next time we'll start heading through the Mistral Woods. So thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Did you click like, helps out a bunch. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon.